Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I want to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for coming from all over the world to my channel. And thank you for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. The first item that I have in today's news is entitled DC Holds Training Sessions for Non-Citizens to Vote. I'm just going to put the link in the description on this one and you can read it for yourself. But I have to ask, why are we training non-citizens to vote? Non-citizens should not have any voice in our country at all. In terms of political things, in terms of governmental operations, they should not be involved. And yet, here we are, training people to vote. Every time we turn around, somebody's undermining our democracy, our constitutional republic, excuse me. We don't have a democracy while well, we're not supposed to have. We're supposed to have a constitutional republic. Oh. This next article, I have some highlights that I wanted to talk about. The title of this is Alarming Increase in New Cancer Cases, and this is an article by Cheryl Atkinson. As you may know, I think I've pointed out to several times, Cheryl is a, um, she is a, uh, was a CBS reporter and left CBS because they wouldn't let her report on what she wanted to report on. So she's now an independent journalist and reports on her own site. This year, for the first time ever, new cases of cancer in the U.S. are expected to surpass 2 million. The alarming increase follows a period of relative stability in new cancer cases prior to COVID. Experts disagree on the root cause. Some say it's just a backlog after so many people put off screenings during the shutdowns. One thing that bothers me about this is an alarming increase. What, you know, what was it before? She doesn't tell us, and so we don't have anything to gauge whether it really is alarming or not. But anyway, uh, that's just one of the things that I notice when I read articles is what, what do they leave out? Because a lot of times what they leave out is more important than what they put in. Uh, another paragraph, Dr. Goodyear, turbo cancer describes what we see and what we've seen now for four years. And what we're seeing with the pandemic is cancer changing. There was cancer pre-pandemic and there's cancer post-pandemic. They are not the same thing. Uh, he goes on to talk about how the spike proteins in COVID-19 and in the vaccines are what's affecting the changes in cancer. So this is something I would say we need to monitor, we need to keep a close eye on because there could be something to it or it may be nothing. The next article I have is classified docs from State Department give more credence to COVID-19 Chinese lab leak. This is another Cheryl Atkinson article. And she writes in this one, the House Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic recently reviewed classified State Department documents that credibly suggest COVID-19 originated from a lab-related accident in Wuhan, China. Many experts said this was the case from the start of the pandemic, but were uh, censored by the U.S. government media and social media. The lab and research at issue, controversial gain of function studies. Okay, the lab and research at issue, controversial gain of function studies to develop new vaccines, were funded with U.S. taxpayer money set, uh, by Dr. Anthony Fauci's National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. All of this, of course, we already know. The documents also strongly convey that the Chinese Communist Party attempted to cover up the lab leak and that the Wuhan Institute of Virology maintains a relationship with the Chinese People's Liberation Army, according to the members of Congress. So, I, I don't think there's anything 
really surprising in here, but uh, basically what's happening is we're just getting more and more information leaking out about what actually took place. And we're finding out that we've been lied to by the governments of the world, all of them, by the World Health Organization, by everybody. This last article I have is the trial against Trump will throw the election into chaos. I don't really care about that, but I highlighted something at the bottom that I do care about. It's still quite possible that the Manhattan jury will convict Trump on the 34 felony charges Bragg has brought, but there's no chance the, the conviction will withstand appeal, particularly given that it relies so heavily on Cohen's testimony. At best, the anti-Trump resistance will win a Pyrrhic victory. They may get their headline, Trump convicted in hush money trial, but the charge will not stick. But here's the bottom line. The hush money trial also gives permission and incentive to ambitious Republican prosecutors to repay Democrats in kind. Our legal system will soon be dominated by the whims of those in power as opposed to the rule of law. Costello on Wednesday summed up the dangers of Bragg's folly. In the Trump case, they're seeking a conviction by any means necessary, he said. They do not care if it's overturned on appeal because that will likely not happen until after the election. In the meantime, they will have effectively interfered with the 2024 presidential election and perhaps influenced some voters because of an ill-gotten conviction. In other words, Alvin Bragg is destroying our democratic system in order to save it. The point that I want to get to here is whenever you use the justice system for political means, you open a door and there are, there are ambitious people on both sides of the aisle that will use that door to pursue similar cases on other defendants of the opposite party. And so what you end up with is a justice system that exists to, to punish politicians instead of administering justice. And that is just wrong, and that's the reason why, no matter who it is, Trump or anybody else, a case like this should never have been brought. It's a, it's a pox on America. But that's where we are in 2024. As always, I pray that you will live an abundant life, that you will be healthy, that you will live a long time, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he will do the same for every person you love. But most of all, I pray that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will let your requests be made known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.